card, please. The news of Roger Federer's latest operation, ruling him out of action for an unspecified period, and Rafael Nadal's decision to sit out the rest of 2021 through injury, has reminded us all of their tennis mortality. And although Novak Djokovic should still be competing at the top for another few years, there will come a day when the so-called Big Three, the trio of men who have hoovered up most of the major honours for almost 20 years, are no longer active on the tour. Which begs the well-worn question, who's next? That it's a well-worn question suggests we've been looking down the road for some time at who might emerge from the pack to become the leading figures in the men's game for the 2020s. The search for the next Federer, in particular, has been going on for more than a decade. Partly, this is down to an increase in chatter from an expanded tennis media landscape. Partly, it is due to Federer's own incredible longevity, still in the top 10 on his 40th birthday. But largely, it is because, in that time, no one has really stepped up to fill his shoes. Sure, some much younger men sit above him in the rankings, but only one of those, Dominic Thiem, has won a Grand Slam title. And he achieved it at the age of 27, making him the third oldest first-time Slam winner this century. By contrast, Federer and Nadal both had 12 Grand Slams apiece at the age of 27. Djokovic had six. Andy Murray had already won a second Slam too. Team and the other 20-somethings inside the top 10 have not made a similar breakthrough largely because of Djokovic's recent dominance, which shows no signs of abating. Daniel Medvedev, Alexander Zverev and Stefanos Tsitsipas, part of the so-called next-gen, have all been knocking on the door with recent appearances in slam finals, but seen it shut in their faces, mostly by Djokovic. It's not just at the slams either. Of the last 32 Masters 1000 series events played since May 2017, when Alexander Zverev won his first in Rome, next-gen players claimed 12 titles. But Federer, Nadal and Djokovic won 14 between them. The next-gen of Daniel Medvedev, Stefanos Tsitsipas, Alexander Zverev, Francis Tiafo, Denis Shapovalov, Andrei Rublev and Kaspar Ruud should really be the now-gen, and yet Djokovic and Nadal remain a roadblock in their careers when fully fit. The Big Three may have become the Big Two of late when it comes to handing out the major trophies, but they are not keen on surrendering to those who should, in theory, be coming into their peak ages. Tsitsipa, for example, turned 23 in August 2021. A few days before his birthday, he moved above Nadal and into the world's top three, a career high. By contrast, Nadal had first got to number three a few days after his 19th birthday. Tsitsipa, therefore, could be said to be four years behind the Spaniard in terms of progression. Nadal is a special case, of course. Only he, Andre Agassi, Bjorn Borg, Boris Becker and Mats Volander have broken into the top three as teenagers. But Djokovic was 20 and Federer 21 when they first got there, so Tsitsipa is also well behind them. His ascent to world number three more matches the timeline of Goran Ivanisevic and Gustavo Querton. Actually, 23 is a good marker on which to judge the current crop of challengers to the throne. Earlier, we mentioned the success the big three had enjoyed by the age of 27. Well, age 23, Federer, Nadal and Djokovic had 10 Grand Slam titles and 24 Masters Series trophies between them. At the point when Medvedev, Tsitsipa, Zverev, Tiafo and Rublev turned 23 in recent years, only Tsitsipa had been involved in a Grand Slam final, and only he and Zverev had won Masters Series titles. But is the peak age for a top tennis player getting older? In 2018, the average age of the end-of-year top 10 was 30 years and 5 months, the highest since the ATP rankings began. Just one player, Zverev, was under the age of 25. That figure dropped to 28 years and 8 months in 2019 and 27 years and 7 months in 2020. That trend is reflected too in the average age of ATP Tour winners. As this graph shows, this rose dramatically between 2012 and 2017, helped by continued success for the Big Three in their late 20s and early 30s. In 2015, the average age of a Tour champion was 29. A decade earlier, and it was 24, 
And another interesting trend in the past few years, the average age of tournament winners would be considerably lower were it not for the ongoing success of the big three. If Djokovic plays on for, say, three more seasons, current nearest rival, Medvedev, will be 28 when he starts to get more of a free run. Zverev will be 27, Tsitsipa and Rublev 26, and Shapovalov 25. So there is time for them yet to accumulate titles, and as the recent Grand Slams show, they are getting closer. But we have been here before. The last next gen, the lost gen, comprised of the likes of Dominic Team, Milos Raonic, Kai Nishikori, and baby-fed Grigor Dimitrov, were never able to fulfill their potential because the big three and Murray were still just too good. So perhaps we should look to skip a generation to find the successors to Federer, Djokovic, and Nadal. Maybe Felix Auger Aliassim, Yannick Sinner, Sebastian Korda, Carlos Alcaraz, Miomir Kikmanovic, and Lorenzo Musetti, all 21 or under, are the most likely to clean up when Djokovic gives up. After all, in June 2006, a 19-year-old Serb with just one Grand Slam quarter-final appearance to his name was looking with intent just outside the world's top 50, a similar career profile to Musetti now, and he has rather loftily described himself and fellow Italian teenager Yannick Sinner as the future of tennis. If he is right, maybe tennis's much-vaunted next-gen will actually give way themselves to the future-gen.